Monster Hunter World Iceborne's endgame can be a challenge for the best of hunters out there, but with the right weapons and builds, even endgame tasks can easily be achieved. I'm Darkblade, and we're back with even more amazing builds for Monster Hunter World Iceborne. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at endgame builds for the hammer. The hammer is an awesome damage dealing weapon, but it has a few hidden qualities. Being a blunt weapon, it has a natural knockout effect with each swing, allowing you to KO a monster, to which you can follow this up with some of your higher damage combos. On top of that, the hammer is one of the weapons that benefit the most from the clutch claw. This is thanks to the clutch claw being utilized in a lot of the hammer's combo rotations. Able to go into the clutch claw attack after numerous moves, the hammer can really utilize this new addition that was introduced with Iceborne, resulting in a monster being tenderized almost 100% of the time. The builds I use tend to capitalize on all these aspects, resulting in some efficient and fun builds. But a disclaimer for this series though, these builds are aimed for endgame hunters, having completed the main story and having access to all armors and weaponry the game has to offer. A large jewel collection is also desired, but you can always swap out the jewels here and there if you do not have what is shown in the video. So the first build I use is the Master's Touch build. This build is a strong DPS focused build that makes use of the Master's Touch set bonus. As a result, this build will have high affinity and should see minimal sharpness loss. So, for this build you'll need the Kaiser Crown Beta, the Rex Royal Male Beta, the Kaiser Van Braces Beta, the Kaiser Coil Beta, and the Garuga Greaves Beta. I'm also using the Handicraft Charm 4, and for my weapon I'm using the main Malish Rajan, which is the Rajang Hammer. This has an Affinity Increase Augmentation, Health Regen Augmentation, and then an Augmentation of your choice, to which I've gone for a Defense Increase Augmentation. Now, as for the jewels, as I said at the start of the video, you may have to swap out jewels here and there depending on what you have in your collection. Firstly, I've gone for tenderizer jewels to max out weakness exploit. I've then gone for critical jewels to max out the crit boost skill. I've then gone for challenger jewels to max out the agitator skill. Some of these had byproducts, namely in the form of vitality jewels to max out the health boost. I've then gone for expert jewels for some critical eye, attack jewels to get the attack boost to at least level 4, and finally a slider jewel to give us the affinity sliding. As for your jewels on the mantles, these are down to personal preference, to which I've gone for KO jewels on the impact mantle and attack jewels on the temporal mantle. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health and 150 stamina when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You'll have an attack of 1752 with a decent chunk of white sharpness. You have 40% base affinity, which can get to 100% so long as you're attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized through clutch core attacks first, which isn't an issue too much with the hammer. On top of that, you can get to 100% once Agitator kicks in as well, or you make use of the Affinity Sliding skill. Anyway, you have an Elemental Rating of 120, with a strong defense of 928, that is strong against Fire, Water and Dragon, but unfortunately weak to Water and Ice. So as for the skills, you have Critical Eye level 7, Critical Eye increases the base affinity of this build, you have Agitator level 5, Agitator is a wonderful skill in Monster Hunter World Iceborne, when a monster becomes enraged, the agitator buff will kick in, giving your hunter increased raw attack and affinity. You'll also have attack boost level 4, which can be potentially level 6 when you're wearing mantles. Attack boost increases our raw attack, and at level 4, it grants us a bonus of 5% affinity. You have handicraft level 4, increasing the sharpness of this build. You have health boost level 3, allowing our health to get to that potential maximum of 200. You have crit boost level 3. Crit boost increases the damage of our attacks when we crit a monster, but this only applies to the raw portion of our attacks. So it won't apply to the elemental portion, or element portion, if we were using an element weapon. So crit boost works well when the weapon you're using has a high raw attack, as is the case with this build. Anyway, you have Weakness Exploit level 3. Weakness Exploit increases your affinity by a set percentage when you're attacking monster weak points, and this can be increased even further should those weak points be tenderized first through Clutch Claw attacks. At level 3, it can give you a bonus of 50% affinity. You have Blast Attack level 2. Unfortunately, this is a byproduct of the armor we're wearing. You can't really get rid of this, but you could consider using a Blast weapon if you wanted to. Blast Attack basically increases the Blast rating and build up the Blast element. You have Heat Guard level 1, again another byproduct of the armor we're wearing. Heat Guard prevents any damage when you're in hot areas such as the lava zones found in both the Elder's Recess or the Guidance Lands. You have Latent Power level 1, again another byproduct but is useful especially for the hammer. 
Latent power is a buff that kicks in when you've taken enough damage or you've been fighting a monster for a set amount of time, increasing your affinity and reducing your stamina consumption. Anyway, you also have Affinity Sliding Level 1. Affinity Sliding is a buff that kicks in when you perform sliding moves, increasing your affinity by a large amount for a short duration. And as the hammer is one of the weapons that really benefits when it comes to sliding attacks, this is a good skill to consider. Anyway, you'll also have Slugger level 2 when you're wearing your mantles, increasing the knockout potential of our attacks. And finally, for the set bonus, you'll have Teostra's Technique Master's Touch, preventing any sharpness loss when you crit a monster. And as this build has high affinity, you shouldn't see much sharpness loss whatsoever. So there you have it. As you can see, it is a strong DPS build that makes use of the Master's Touch skill. On top of that as well, the Rajang weapon, even though it is a thunder elemental weapon, because of its sheer high raw attack, you can really take it against any monster, regardless of their elemental weaknesses. Of course, it will do a lot more damage should the monster be weak to thunder, but I wouldn't stress about taking this to a monster that was resistant to thunder. But anyway, every build unfortunately has pros and cons. The biggest pro for this build is its sheer damage output. Thanks to having a lot of DPS focused skills including Critical Eye, Agitator, Attack Boost, Crit Boost and Weakness Exploit, all of these combined with the high raw attack of the Rajang Hammer means that we should be able to bring down monsters quite quickly. On top of that, it's a build that doesn't really have to worry about sharpening. Thanks to the Master's Touch skill as well as the high affinity this build has, it means that rarely should we see any sharpness loss, allowing us to keep the white sharpness on this build going for pretty much the duration of a hunt. And finally for this build, in terms of pros, it is a weapon that can pretty much get away with using any hammer. Thanks to using the handicraft charm, we're pretty much able to use any weapon that could get to purple sharpness. And if we were to switch to a weapon that didn't need any additional sharpness, we can simply swap out the handicraft charm for another DPS orientated skill such as peak performance. But unfortunately every build has its cons. The biggest con for this build is unfortunately it does lack defensive skills and quality of life skills. But you can argue that a good offense is the best defense, and that is certainly the case with this build. And the final con with this build is unfortunately it is quite a jewel heavy build, requiring some of the rarer jewels such as challenger vitality jewels that maybe not everyone has access to unfortunately. But regardless, even if you were to replace some of the gems here and there, this build is incredibly strong. And thanks to the high affinity, if you dislike having to manage your sharpness gauge, this is a build to consider and is perfect for anyone who likes a strong DPS build. Which brings us on to the next build, which is the True Elemental Acceleration build. This build is focused all around high elemental damage. Making use of the Namiel set bonus, we are able to increase this elemental damage to even higher levels. So for this build, you'll need the Fulgor Helm Beta, Tentacle Cloak Beta, Tentacle Gloves Beta, Tentacle Coil Beta, and the Tentacle Greaves Beta. I'm also using a Handicraft Charm 4, and for my weapon, I'm using Aqua Fluorescence, which is the Coral Puke Puke Hammer. This has an elemental up augmentation and then you'll have an augmentation to use of your choice, to which I've gone for a defense up increase. Now this build can work with other elemental weapons, but if you swap them around, you're gonna have to swap the jewels. Which brings us onto the jewels section, to which I've gone for stream jewels to max out the water attack of this build. Like I just mentioned, you'll have to replace this to match whatever element you are using if you're using a different weapon. I've then gone for vitality jewels for health boost, KO jewels, for the slugger skill, tenderizer jewels for weakness exploit, a sharp jewel for the protective polish skill, and then finally you'll have a few jewels to play around with, to which I've gone for resistor jewels for a change to increase the blight resistance skill. As for the jewels on our mantles, for the glider mantle I've gone for slider, flight and expert jewels, and for the rock steady mantle I've gone for protection jewels. So if you've done what I've done here you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina which will be 200 health and 150 stamina when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You have an attack of 1378 with purple sharpness. You have no percent affinity which can be potentially 50% affinity so long as you're attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized through clutch claw attacks first. You have a water rating of 960 which will increase to well over 1000 once the true elemental acceleration skill kicks in. You have a defense rating of 920 that is incredibly strong against water and thunder but unfortunately weak to the other elements. As for the skills you have water attack level 6, water attack increases the water rating and damage of this build. You have handicraft level 4, health boost level 3, blight resistance level 3. Blight resistance is a byproduct of the armor we're wearing as well as the optional jewels we have on this build. Blight resistance basically nullifies and negates any blight our hunter may receive such as ice blight, fire blight and so on. You'll also have weakness exploit level 3, slugger level 3, 
Stamina Surge level 3. Stamina Surge is a byproduct of the gear we're wearing, but is useful for the hammer as the hammer does consume stamina. Stamina Surge basically increases the rate at which our stamina recharges itself. You have Tool Specialist level 3, again another byproduct, but is a decent quality of life skill. Tool Specialist reduces the cooldown on our specialized tools, so our mantles and boosters and such. You have Constitution level 1, again another byproduct. Constitution reduces the cost of set stamina actions such as dodging or evading. You have Protected Polish level 1, which is a wonderful skill. For most melee builds out there, Protected Polish allows you to put a protective coating over your sharpness gauge after you've sharpened your weapon, preventing any sharpness loss for a small duration of time. You have Critical Eye level 2 when you're wearing your mantles, as well as Divine Blessing level 2 when you're wearing your mantles. Divine Blessing gives you a chance at receiving less damage when you take a hit from a monster. You also have Airborne level 1 while wearing our mantles. This increases our damage when performing airborne attacks and the hammer can kind of make use of this as its airborne attacks are quite potent. And finally you'll have affinity sliding level 1. But as for the set bonus you'll have Namio's Divinity True Element Acceleration. This is a buff that kicks in after you've hit a monster enough times, giving a buff that increases our overall elemental rating and thus increase our elemental damage. So as you can see this build is all about elemental damage, but unfortunately it means that you really have to take into consideration a monster's elemental weaknesses. But this build works with pretty much any elemental weapon so long as you have the elemental jewels to match whatever weapon you're using. But there are pros and cons, the biggest pro for this build is its high elemental damage. So long as you're taking into account a monster's weakness you should be able to bring down a monster quite easily. The other pro for this build is it has crowd control potential thanks to having a maximum slugger skill built in. Being able to knock out a monster will leave them vulnerable and open to your higher damaging combos. And finally this build also comes with quite a few quality of life skills. Thanks to having blight resistance, health boost, stamina surge and tool specialist, this build comes with quite a few maxed out skills that while not essential will definitely make hunts a little bit easier. But there are cons unfortunately. The biggest con for this build, in my opinion, is that you need elemental jewels to get the most out of this build. Elemental jewels at one point were the rarest, but they have since been nerfed and are a little bit easier to get, but still, they're not as common as they were in the base version of Monster Hunter World. And the other con is this is a build that doesn't have a lot of affinity. Now, this is countered slightly by the sheer high elemental value this build can get. It's nonetheless a build that has lower affinity than what I would normally go for. But there you have it, that is the true elemental acceleration build that I like to use. As I said, you can swap out the weapon for other elements if you want so long as you have the jewels to match, and so long as you're taking into account a monster's elemental weaknesses, you should be able to rip through them quite quickly with this build. Which brings us on to the next build I use, which I call the Knockout build. This build makes use of an increased slugger skill, resulting in a build that can crowd control a monster easily, allowing you and your hunting party to deal maximum damage. So for this build you need the Golden Headdress Beta, the Diablos Nero Mel Beta, Diablos Nero Braces Beta, Diablos Nero Coil Beta and the Garuga Grease Beta. I'm also using a Handicraft Charm 4 and for my weapon I'm using the Blackwing Deathblow 2. This is the Yang Garuga Hammer. This has an Ability Increase Augmentation, Health Regen Augmentation and then an Attack Increase Augmentation attached to it. As for the custom upgrades I've gone for Attack Increase Upgrades to increase the raw attack value of this weapon. Now as for your jewels, there are quite a few here. Firstly I've gone for KO jewels to give us that maxed out slugger skill. I've then gone for vitality jewels for the health boost skill. Critical jewels for the crit boost skill. A tenderizer jewel for weakness exploit. Some attack jewels for the attack boost skill. A sharp jewel for protective polish. And finally a hard enduring jewel for that item prolonger skill. As for the jewels on the mantles, as always these are kind of down to personal preference. To which on the impact mantle I've gone for a slider jewel. I've also gone for a further jewel to increase the resentment skill on this build and then for the temporal mantle I've gone for attack jewels. So if you've done what I've done here you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina which will be 200 health and 150 stamina when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You have an attack of 1612 with purple sharpness. You have 50% base affinity which can easily be 100% so long as you're attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized first. You have a poison rating of 240, with a decent defense of 907 that is strong against fire, thunder and dragon but unfortunately weak to water and ice. As for the skills you have slugger level 5, normally slugger can only get to level 3 as shown with previous builds in this video, but at level 5 it increases the knockout potential even more. You have attack boost level 4 which can be potentially level 6, handicraft level 4, health boost level 3, critical boost level 3, weakness exploit level 3, item prolonger level 3, 
item prolonger increase the duration of certain items such as buffs from demon powder hard shell powder but the main reason we've taken item prolonger is it also increases the duration that protective polish remains active after we apply it anyway you have critical eye level 2 marathon runner level 2 marathon runner is a byproduct of the gear we're wearing Basically, it reduces the stamina loss when we're performing stamina consuming actions such as charging up our hammer or simply sprinting. You have Resentment level 1 which can be potentially level 2. Resentment is a buff that kicks in after we have a red portion of health on our health bar, increasing the raw attack of our weapon. You have Affinity Sliding level 1, Protected Polish level 1 and finally for the set bonus you have the Diablos Ambition Slugger Secret, allowing us to get that Slugger skill up from level 3 to a maximum of level 5. So there you have it, that is the build I call the knockout build. Now on top of having the increased knockout potential, it's also quite a strong DPS build, thanks to having a high affinity, crit boost and attack boost. Now of course every build can be customised slightly, one suggestion I would bring up is that if you wanted to make a pure crowd control build, you can swap out the Yangaruga hammer for a paralysis or sleep hammer, giving you even more options to crowd control a monster. The choice as always is up to you. But every build has its pros and cons. The biggest pro for this build is its knockout potential, being able to often knock out a monster thanks to a slugger skill at level 5 plus the natural knockout effect from the hammer attacks means that a monster should be crowd controlled quite often during a hunt allowing you to dish out those high damage combos. On top of that it is also a build that has quite a decent DPS output. Thanks to the high affinity skills, crit boost and attack boost this build can still bring down monsters quite quickly. And on top of that, it's another build that can pretty much get away with using any other weapon if it wanted to, thanks to having the handicraft charm. But unfortunately, every build has its pros and cons. The biggest con for this build is unfortunately, again, it's another jewel heavy build, having some of the rarer jewels such as critical vitality jewels and hard enduring jewels. And unfortunately, the other con, which only really applies to the actual weapon we're using in this build, is it only comes with a sliver of purple sharpness, and if you don't apply that protective polish before you actually start fighting a monster, it means you'll burn through it quite quickly, resulting in a loss of DPS. But regardless, this is a strong build to use that can be pretty much used against any monster thanks to the poison element really kind of affecting every monster out there. Well, yes, okay, if the monster is three star weak to poison, this build is gonna do more damage to a monster that is just one star weak to poison. But regardless, so long as you can knock out a monster by aiming for its head, you'll be able to knock them out multiple times to join a hunt, resulting in your longer, higher damage combos, resulting in fairly quick hunts. Which brings us on to the next build, which is the Charged Brutal Big Bang build. This is a quirky niche build for players who love to use the Charged Brutal Big Bang. This move was kind of buffed in a way, thanks to Monster Hunter World Iceborne, as it allows you to perform a follow-up clutch claw attack after performing the Charged Brutal Big Bang, allowing your hunter to grapple onto a monster, spin towards that location, slamming into them, dealing damage at the same time, and then afterwards you can follow up with clutch claw attacks or even flint shots. So for this build you need the Golden Headdress Beta, the Damascus Mel Beta, Ruinous Vambraces Beta, the Damascus Coil Beta and the Ruinous Greaves Beta. I'm also using the Critical Charm too and for my weapon I'm using the Ruinous Obliteration which is the Ruiner Nergigante Hammer. As for the augmentations I've gone for an Affinity Increase Augmentation, Health Regen Augmentation and then you'll have an Augmentation of your choice to which I've gone for a Defense Increase Augmentation. As for your jewels, you've got a few to play around with here. Firstly, I've gone for tenderizer jewels for that weakness exploit skill, earplug jewels for the earplug skill, attack jewels for attack boost, vitality jewels for the health boost skill, challenger jewels for the agitator skill, maintenance jewels for the tool specialist skill, and finally, I've gone for a sated jewel as we had a jewel to play around with for that free meal skill. As for the jewels on the mantles, these are down to personal preference, but I've gone for expert jewels for that critical eye skill. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health and 150 stamina, and you've taken all your relevant consumables. You have an attack with 1,648 with a huge chunk of white sharpness. You have 15% affinity, which can be potentially 75% affinity when you're on a hunt and you're attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized through clutch claw attacks first, which shouldn't be an issue with this build. And of course, you also have to account the agitator skill being active as well. Anyway, you have a dragon rating of 180 with high elder seal, with a very strong defense of 948 that is strong against fire, but a little bit weak to the other elements. As for the skills, you have earplugs level 5, 
Earplugs is a wonderful quality of life skill, especially for the hammer. Earplugs at level 5 allows you to ignore all monster rules, preventing you from being knocked out of your power charge stance and leaving a monster open and vulnerable for you to attack it. Your agitator level 5, attack boost level 4, health boost level 3, critical boost level 3, weakness exploit level 3, focus level 3. Now focus is not the most common skill you would find on the hammer. In fact some people would argue that focus is completely useless on the hammer and whilst I would agree if you are focusing on primarily using the longer combos such as the big bang combo and such this skill is kind of wasted. Basically focus allows you to charge up your moves and abilities more quickly. So for the hammer it allows us to charge up the hammer through the various levels more quickly and as this build is all about the charge brutal big bang we want to be able to perform that move as quickly as possible and thus this is where the focus skill comes into play anyway you'll also have tool specialist level 3 free mill level 1 this is a byproduct of the optional jewels we're using free mill allows us to consume a potion or other item without potentially actually using it up and then finally you'll have critical eye level 2 when we're wearing mantles but as for the set bonus, you also have the Nergigante Ambition, Haste and Recovery, allowing us to restore health when we attack a monster, and this also works in unison with the health regen augmentation, giving us a decent health regen option so long as we're on the offense. So there you have it. As you can see, it is a little bit of a quirky build, but on top of that, it is quite a strong DPS build with quality of life skills. But like I said, the main focus of this build is going into that charged brutal big bang move to which you can follow up with your various clutch claw attacks. But every build has its pros and cons. The biggest pro for this build is its focus on the charged brutal big bang and the clutch claw moves. When you're focusing on this playstyle with the hammer, it means that a monster will be tenderized pretty much the entirety of the hunt, which not only benefits you, but your entire hunting party. The other pro for this build is it's a high DPS build, able to bring down monsters quite quickly, thanks to a combination of agitator, attack boost, crit boost, and weakness exploit. And finally, on top of that, it's also a build that has wonderful quality of life skills, especially for the hammer. Thanks to having health boost, tool specialist, focus, and earplugs, especially earplugs, these skills all add to a more relaxing hunt. But unfortunately, there are cons to every build. The main con for this build is unfortunately it is a dual heavy build again meaning that it uses some of the rarer jewels in the game which not everyone will have access to. The other con, which is a slight minor con for this build, is unfortunately it is weak to 4 out of the 5 elements. Now this can be countered slightly if you wanted to change up your mantles, so you can swap to the various elemental mantles to counter the element of whatever monster you're fighting. But regardless, this is a fun build to use, especially if you like the Charge Brutal Bang playstyle. Whether you're going for the Charge Brutal Big Bang, Charge Brutal Upswing, or any of the spinning moves, Thanks to having focus at level 3, it kind of benefits all of these. This also applies to the non-powered up versions of these attacks. But for me personally, I found this a fun build to use, especially when you go up against a monster that doesn't give you a lot of time to perform the longer combos that the hammer has in its arsenal. Which brings us on to our fifth and final build, which is the True Guy's Veil, Guiding Lands build. This is a build that uses the True Guy's Veil set bonus, so you do have to worry about mantles with this build, but on top of that it's a perfect build that balances DPS, quality of life skills, and of course the essential Guiding Land skills. So for this build you'll need the Shara Ishvalda Helm Beta, the Shara Ishvalda Mel Beta, Shara Ishvalda Braces Beta, the Shara Ishvalda Quill Beta, and the Shara Ishvalda Greaves Beta. I'm also using the Handicraft Charm 4, and for my weapon I'm using the Soulfire Hill Ruin. This is the Lunastra Nogagante Hammer. This has an Affinity Increase Augmentation, Health Regen Augmentation, and then an Augmentation of your choice, to which I've gone for a Status Effect Up Augmentation. Now with this build you also have to take into account the mantles you bring into a hunt, I would always recommend taking the glider mantle and then one of the various elemental based mantles. This is because you need to use mantles that have a long uptime and short cooldown. But we'll explain why in a minute. Anyway, as for the jewels, you'll have a few to play around with here, to which I've gone for tenderizer jewels for that weakness exploit, destroyer jewels for that part breaker skill, a fortitude jewel for the fortify skill, a geology jewel for the geologist skill, expert jewels for some critical eye, vitality jewels for the health boost skill, Maintenance Jewel for the Tool Specialist skill, a KO Jewel for the Slugger skill, 
a sharp jaw for the protective polish skill and a hard enduring jaw for that item prolonger skill. As for the jaws on the mantles I've gone for KO jaws for that slugger skill and maintenance jaw to max out the tool specialist skill. So if you've done what I've done here you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina which will be 200 health and 150 stamina when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You have an attack of 1482 with purple sharpness. You have 25% base affinity, which will be 75% affinity when you're attacking monster weak points that have been tenderized through clutch claw attacks first. You have a blast rating of 240 with a strong defense of 936. That is strong against thunder, neutral against fire and dragon, but unfortunately weak to water and ice. As for the skills, you have the following. You have handicraft level 4, health boost level 3, critical eye level 3, critical boost level 3, weakness exploit level 3, part breaker level 3. Part breaker is one of the essential guiding land skills. Part breaker allows for a hunter to break monster body parts more easily or in the case of guiding land builds it allows you to knock off monster materials more easily. You have item prolonger level 3, recovery up level 2, this is a byproduct of the gear we're wearing but it's still useful. Recovery up increases how much healing we receive through taking potions or other healing effects. You have Coalescence level 2, again another byproduct, but is useful. When we remove a Blight from our Hunter, it will give us increased raw attack, increased elemental attack and ailment attack. Anyway, you have Defense Boost level 1, increasing the defense rating of this build. You have Slugger level 1, which can be potentially level 3, increasing the knockout potential of this build. And to be honest, with the way the mantles work on this build, Slugger should be active at level 3 all the time. You have Fortify level 1, another Guiding Lands focused skill that increases our raw attack and defense every time we faint up to a maximum of two times. You have Geologist level 1, again another Guiding Lands focused skill. Geologist currently at the time of this video allows you to loot monster materials twice instead of just once, but this only applies to the high tier monsters. Anyway, you have Tool Specialist level 1, which can be potentially level 3 when we're wearing the Glider Mantle. Tool Specialist is essential with this build, as it reduces the cooldown on our mantles enough so they work in unison. As when one is about to be used up, the other one should be off cooldown. Anyway, you have Protective Polish level 1, Hasten Recovery level 1. This is a skill found on the weapon we're using. It's basically the Nergigante set bonus, allowing us to restore health when we attack a monster. And this, as I said in the previous build, does work in conjunction with the health regen augmentation. And finally you'll have the set bonus Shara Ishvada Divinity True Guy's Veil. This is a wonderful quality of life buff that kicks in when you're wearing a mantle. When you're wearing a mantle basically it provides you with tremor resistance level 3 allowing you to ignore all tremor attacks. You'll get earplugs level 5 ignoring all monster rules. You'll get maximum windproof ignoring all wind attacks and you'll get flinch free preventing knockbacks and other reactions to small damage such as tripping attacks and such. So it provides you with a lot of quality of life skills. So there you have it, as you can see it is an all round build, combining some damage options with quality of life options and more importantly the skills related to the guiding lands. But this is all thanks to the True Guy's Veil vale set bonus. Now with True Guy's Veil vale, when you go into a hunt, the aim is to have a mantle active for pretty much the entirety of a hunt. And this is kind of thanks to the tool specialist as well as the mantles we're using. Using the glider mantle in conjunction with an elemental mantle, it's normally a case of sticking on one of the mantles when you start fighting a monster. As soon as it wears off, apply the next mantle so you maintain the true guy's veil buff. And then while you're wearing that second mantle, the other one should be recharging. And by the time the second one that you're wearing at the moment is used up, that first one should be ready to go again. So you rinse and repeat this over and over again until the hunt is done. But unfortunately, every build has its pros and cons. The biggest pro for this build, I would say, is it's an all round build, combining lots of aspects from DPS to survival. The other major pro is the True Guy's Veil vale set bonus, giving us a ton of quality of life skills so long as we're wearing mantles. Also, so long as you're wearing upgraded mantles, it allows you extra sockets in your build that you wouldn't normally have, allowing for more skills. Like in the case of this build, we've pretty much got Slugger at level 3 for pretty much the entirety of a hunt. And the final pro for this build is it's surprisingly good when it comes to defense in terms of health regen options. Thanks to Hasten Recovery, the health regen augmentation and recovery up, it means that we can regenerate our health so long as we're on the offensive, meaning that we don't have to sheave our weapon and drink a potion manually, resulting in a drop in DPS. But unfortunately every build does have its cons. The biggest and main con for this build is unfortunately it relies heavily on mantles. Mantles are all part of this build's gameplay style meaning that if you're going for a TNA speedrun, it's not going to work out so well. 
But regardless, if you're going into the Guiding Lands, this is a wonderful build to consider. It can be used against pretty much any monster, and even though we're using the Blast Element, the Blast Element, as well as the Poison Element, can be argued that they can pretty much be used against any monster regardless of their element or elemental weaknesses. Of course, yes, if you are going against a monster that has a 3-star weakness to the Blast Element, this build is going to do a bit more damage than a monster that has a 1-star rating. But like I said, it can be used pretty much against any monster, and the quality of life skills provided thanks to True Guy as well, it means we can take on hunts in the Guiding Lands quite comfortably. So there we have it, those are endgame builds I use for the Hammer in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Now of course there are more endgame builds to come, and as I always say, you don't have to use what is shown in these videos as most tasks in Monster Hunter World Iceborne can be taken on with any weapon or gear set. But anyway, I hope you found this video helpful or informative, and until next time, I'll be in Darkblade, bringing you endgame builds for the hammer in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.